LEGO Racers is the first crab type game with an endless list of possible gameplay styles, such as you can roleplay as a crab. And the other possible gameplay style is that you can roleplay as a crab, but you can go like real quick like, yeah? You can go like your crab washing is finished and you want to go lift the lid on the laundry before the clothes start to get that mildewy smell to them that you could technically wash out with another wash, but you'd already forgotten about them the first time and now they've already- And remarkably, at the moment in 2023, the game is- it's literally like as popular as it's ever been. Seriously, like if you look at the speedrunning chart for Lego Races at the moment in 2023, you are getting new runs daily. It's absolutely remarkable. And one of the main reasons for the increased popularity in LEGO Races is some recently discovered new mechanics, new hidden mechanics that we did not have any idea about up until recently. The game is 24 years old, almost a quarter of a century old, and we've only now just figured out some of these new strategies. And so times are being submitted on a daily basis in all categories for all tracks. Uh, however, having said this, there are currently no guides on YouTube for speedrunning LEGO Races. I have been speedrunning the game for approximately calendar. Six months, seven months, eight months, nine months, nine months. I have been speedrunning for 10 months now. And there's no guides. There's still no guides. So I am making the first guide for LEGO Racer speedrunning. So I can say whatever I want about the game. And there's nobody to correct me. So it's a game about crabs. That's what I've decided. First part of this video, it's going to be yeah, more entertainment. Kind of just what I wanted out of the video originally. I went to YouTube originally, tried to find out what LEGO Racer speedrunning looks like, and I could find nothing. I could find some videos that were you know, 8 years old, 9 years old, of old world records that have been long beaten. First part of this video, I'm just going to be showcasing some of the glitches, some of the routes, some of the strategies, what uh, top play looks like. Second part of this video, I'm going to be actually doing a breakdown and a deconstruction and a guide, as per the title of the video, on how to speedrun LEGO Racers. If you want to look for a certain section of the video, uh, just look in the description. I'll put a timestamp there for each of the different sections. Here we go. Like races is really interesting when it comes to the glitches, yeah? Because there's not a lot of them. I mean, there's none that really help you that much with your gameplay. A lot of them actually break the game in ways that do not help you with speedruns. For instance, this one. And for instance, this one. And for instance, this one. this one. However, there are two versions of the game. There is the 1999 release and there is the 2001 release. In the 2001 release, you can do lap skipping. This is where you drive forwards and backwards past invisible checkpoints that the player cannot see and you win, right? I mean, it's lap skipping. There, um, this is the 80% glitched category that you can participate with this. So let's fly through the levels. Imperial Grand Prix? Nah, not much really. I mean, you can honk and uh, that shoots this cannon which opens that thing. It's not a glitch, but it's kind of cool. Is another fun one. It's not very realistic. Um, it's got cheat codes in order to be able to get this one, but you can get shot up onto the roof. I wonder, I haven't actually tried this one out myself. I wonder what happens if you try to go out of bounds, like if you go over the water or some such. I wonder if there's invisible walls the whole way around. Really fun one though. I like Duck that. Across stash. No, nah, nothing. Magma Moon Marathon. Oh yeah, there's a glitch in this one. Check this out. So by doing this, you can achieve as low as a six or seven second lap time. You can literally warp out of the map, but it's actually not useful because the lap skipping's quicker. Desert Adventure Dragway. Yeah, you got the super warp. Check this. This is not considered a glitch because what this actually is, is it's just kind of a manipulation of the mechanic. Whenever you come out of a warp, you're always elevated a short distance off of the grounds, and it just happens to be that if you take your hands off the controls entirely here, then your car will bounce off of the ground, and then you will just go wee, just like that. Apart from that, you've got this, uh, the quicksand of uh, Desert Adventure Dragway. Check this. You go over it the first time, then the second time, but you just fall through. Nothing that you can do with speedrunning here, it's just interesting. I'm not going to talk about this one too much because I don't really know much about it, but if you warp at a very specific point here, then you can get infinitely stuck in a warp, as shown by the NPCs here. Tribal Island Trail. No, don't think so. Royal Knights Raceway. Eh, nah, not really. But you can short warp. You can do this. And this is where the warp is supposed to take you. But apart from that, nothing remarkable. Ice Planet Pathway. Yes, you've got glitches. Yeah, you can do this. You can go. Whee! Just like that. 
It can get used in speedrun, but it's very, very difficult to time your warp to be able to get that consistently. Night Marathon. Nope, I don't think there is any glitches. However, I do want to point this out. You would have all looked as a kid trying to find a shortcut in this one, yeah? I spent a lot of time going back and forth with the shortcut. Where is it? Where is it? There was two, actually. Not one, but two shortcuts that were supposed to be in the original release of the game. However, they were too difficult to implement. They ran out of time, whatever. Uh, they ran out of something. Don't know. Could it be peanuts? Could it be money? Time? I'm not sure. However, there are there is still evidence of two shortcuts being in the game. Firstly is this one here. Um, you would shoot down the pillar, the pillar would fall over, it would tumble, then you would go onto the roof. You can see evidence of the red brick here. And here is where the shortcut is supposed to end. And you can see that the ground is very, very elevated. It goes up and down and they just have not uh, patched that ground correctly. You've also got this one here. Um, there was supposed to be a boulder here. You can see the shape of the boulder, the kind of semicircle where it should have been on the wall. And if we go up to the wall and try and look through it, hello, what's this? It's only a white brick. Go on down here, looking around, you can look through the wall here and you can see that there is a green and red brick as well. So that's a shortcut that was supposed to be there. It's not a glitch, but it got patched out. Thought it'd be interesting to point out. Pirate Skull Pass. No? No. No, I don't think so. No, there's not. However, there is also a remove shortcut in here. If you look through the wall here, you can see that there is a white brick and there's red brick through this wall here as well. This is where the shortcut was supposed to start. Alien Rally Asteroid. Yes, you have the Spacey Boy. You can do this. You can go, Wee! And the reason for that is that when you get in range of the Spacey Boy, he would initially pull you forward and then he will shoot you backwards. Um, but if you shield just as you get pulled forward, then you can uh, take use of the acceleration that he gives you without being shot backwards. Now, this one here is my absolute favorite glitch in the game. What you do, right, um, when you start the level, you fall down a little bit. You fall down like a few feet or something. The spacey boy, if he pulls you backwards, that keep, the game keeps the acceleration through the reset. So you reset and this happens. Get out of here, Gypsy Moth. You kind of like Goomba Stomper and she just goes away. She's gone under the map. You can see that she's now driving on her route. She is still driving around the map. If you go to a certain point in the map, you can actually see her driving. And eventually, after I think about three or four laps, she will find her way back to the track. But all of her laps are... She won't be going through the checkpoints. So she's in the Shadow Realm. She is gone. Rocket Racer Run or Rocket Racer City. I don't know. It depends on what version of the game you're playing. Anyway, one, there is one glitch in this level, and it is this. So Rocket Racer decides to take matters into his own hands and he is just, he is just the warp man. He is stuck in an infinite warp and he is never going to leave this infinite warp. Versions. Okay, this one's interesting. You've got two versions of LEGO Racers. One is the 1999 version and one is the 2001 version. The main differences between the two versions is this. There is different physics is the first. You have updated quotations physics in 2001, which results in far easier controls for your car compared to the 1999 version. But in some circumstances, it is slower. The 1999 version is considered to be the faster of the two, despite 2001 being easier. And the second difference, and this is a big one, is that in 2001, you have a bigger pickup radius for the bricks. This can be both a blessing and a curse. There is something called brick contamination, which is, for instance, somewhere in the map, you might want to pick up a green brick, but if you're holding a red when you hit the green, then you will contaminate that green brick and swap it with your red. It is sometimes detrimental to have this bigger pickup radius because in some circumstances, you cannot avoid picking up some bricks and contaminating other bricks. However, the main difference between the 1999 version and the 2001 version is the physics. In the 1999 version, you can do what's called tilting. This is what tilting is. So as you see, when you activate the blue boost, you can tilt. This is where you activate the boost when you are either one on uneven terrain or two, you hold a directional input into uneven terrain and you are tilted for the remainder of the boost. And this kind of, it doesn't lock your steering necessarily, but it, it completely changes the physics of your steering and it can make it extremely unpredictable. It makes it very, very hard to pick up bricks and very, very hard to control your vehicle. You want to avoid tilting at all costs. If you warp while you are tilted, you will remain tilted at the end of the warp. So you want to avoid, one, either warping while you are tilted, or two, you want to wait until you have landed your vehicle from a blue boost until you warp. Or three, you want to make sure you have a clear run, clear straight pathway after you exit your warp if you have to warp while you are tilted. In the 2001 version, 
you're a tricycle, right? I mean, you've got water wings on your car. They've updated the physics. You cannot tilt. It is far easier to steer your car in the 2001 version. However, due to other differences in the physics, the 1999 version can still be considered to be one of the faster versions of the two games. However, in some circumstances, like this world record here, which is Flake's uh, run for Alien Rally Asteroid, you can utilize the bigger pickup radius to pick up greens and whites where you otherwise would not be able to in the 1999 version. So it swings and roundabouts, right? Sometimes you don't want to pick up the bricks, but other times you do, eh, 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 it evens out anyway. This can be very exciting because it means that the two versions of the game can have different strategies, both for individual runs and for full runs. Even though they are two different versions of the game, they are both recorded the same on speedrun.com. Which, how can you tell which version you're using? Two ways. One, just go to level uh, Rocket Racer in the 2001 version, it's called Rocket Racer City. In the 1999 version, it's called Rocket Racer Run from memory. Yes, I think it is Rocket Racer Run. The mechanics of LEGO Racers. So despite it being in the instruction books, I don't feel like a lot of people don't actually realize that there are not one, but two different types of slides in LEGO Racers. You have your standard slide, which looks like this. This is when the front of the vehicle is going to be turning into the slide. And then you have super slides. These are very sharp uh, slides that you, it kicks out the back of the vehicle and it's very good for sharp, succinct turns. This is what they look like. The way that you activate your slide, you just hold down spacebar, normal, normal, super slides. It's a bit uncomfortable with your fingers, you'll have to get used to it, but you hold down up and down at the same time as doing your slides to activate your super slide. A combination of them are frequently used in every single level of the game, get used to them. Now, in addition to sliding, bumping, and just hitting anything in the game is the worst possible thing that you can do. Your car loses its traction when you bump and you completely lose your ability to steer. Have a look at these clips here, where I'm going to hit the wall while boosting and how much time I lose. Now, in the first circuit against Redbeard, his main gimmick is that he's going to be cannonballing you at every single opportunity. There's a mechanic in this game called boss bunting, and that is where you take off the finish line and you try to steer your car. You would hold down, you would, you would hit forward when you go to boost off, and at the very last second after it would say go, you would hold down right and you would just hit the boss and you would shoot him into the back of the pack. NPC pathing. This is one that you will learn the more that you play LEGO Racers. The NPCs are what I'm just going to call on rails. That is to say, they are going to be taking the same predetermined routes every single time that you play the game. When you load into a track, um, I'm just going to call it a seed for this instance, your NPCs, they are going to go onto probably one of two or three set determined paths. For the bosses, there are usually more than two or three paths, but for the main NPCs, there are usually just two or three. That is to say that they are going to be going exactly the same route every single time. However, because of the different possibilities of every NPC going onto different uh, routes, it means that the outcome of them picking up bricks is going to be different. The boosting at the start is also random, so every single time you are going to have a different experience of them picking up different bricks at different times, different whites being missing at different times, etc, etc. What this means though is that the more that you play, the more that you're going to be learning about the NPC's different pathways, and the more that you're going to be able to anticipate what bricks are going to be present and what bricks are going to be missing. Here is a very clear example of how NPC pathing is very important. Uh, Robin Hood on Dark Forest Dash. He can take one of three different set determined paths, and in this one here, he does not pick up this white brick, whereas he does pick it up in the other routes. If you are driving behind Robin Hood, then you will be able to memorize his pathway and you will know whether he is going to navigate himself towards the white brick or whether he is going to leave it. If you know he is going to navigate himself towards the white brick and you cannot beat him there, it's best to use your boost here. However, if you know that he is not going to be driving into that brick, it's actually most advantageous for you to hold onto your boost. So in some instances, it's good knowing the NPC's pathways, but for a lot of the NPCs, it's not actually going to matter entirely. Here is another funny thing that you can do here just to iterate them being on rails. If you drive into an NPC re um, relentlessly and just over and over, then you're actually able to push them back onto their start line. And it, th this is what I call them. I call this like corkscrewing them into the starting line, right? They are not going to move from this spot until an NPC bumps into them or until you bump into them. Brick mechanics. Okay, I'll fly through this because I think a lot of you will know this already. If you pick up a brick when you don't have a brick already, then it will respawn in five seconds. If you pick up a brick when you have one already, then you're going to swap the placement of these two bricks. If you pick up a white brick, or if an NPC picks up a white brick, it is going to be gone indefinitely until that white brick is used or removed by uh, being hit by a projectile. Th these white bricks have a duration of about 7 or 8 seconds before they go back and respawn at their certain point and despawn from when they were left. 
And as soon as you use white brick, it's going to become available on a map. This is important because in some instances you don't want to use your white bricks knowing that NPCs are going to come and pick them up if you use them too early. So some strategies hinge around you hoarding your white bricks so NPCs do not pick them up. So there's a certain term that we use called brick contamination and this is when you pick up a brick when you have one in your inventory already and you swap the two bricks. What this leads to though is opportunities to use brick manipulation where you might want to intentionally swap over two bricks or you might want to absolutely stop. Uh, two bricks from being swapped over. And here's an example here, a Night Marathon, where you want to pick up the shield and swap it with a red brick, and that ensures that when Bezel the Bat Lord comes later, he is not going to pick up the red brick. He's instead going to pick up a shield and is going to use the shield rather than picking up the red brick and swapping it with your valuable, valuable green brick that you want to pick up the next lap. And here's another example here on Adventure Temple Trail where you want to very, very intentionally avoid picking up any bricks because if you pick up a brick, then you're going to contaminate your green brick and it's not going to be available for you the next lap. So be very careful about brick contamination as you play. Hidden mechanics. This is the reason that I've made the video. As of late 2022 or early 2023, I forget, two new mechanics or hidden mechanics for LEGO Racers were discovered. It was something that we were all kind of cognizant of while playing the game, but we weren't actually quite aware of how powerful they were until we discovered them and actually experimented with them. The first is what we have termed snap slides. When you come out of a boost, your vehicle has about 120% acceleration and it would gradually decrease to its normal 100% acceleration, the top speed of the vehicle. During this period of time, it's about three seconds, four seconds, you can activate what we've termed snap slides. This is done by activating the super slide, which I'll remind you is just holding up, down, and holding the slide. It's when you kick your vehicle out of the back. You can do this very tight turns, etc, etc. If you try to super slide while you have that additional acceleration, you'll activate what we've turned a snap slide. You can turn extremely sharply, extremely fast, and you can perform maneuvers such as this. So having viewed that, you can imagine how much this has impacted the speedrunning community for this game. Being able to do such intricate turns so sharply, so quickly, so intricately, really blows open the waters for what we can do in speedrunning LEGO races. It has now transformed the game to trying to warp as much as possible, to also trying to use as many standard green boosts as possible, because they open up the opportunity for snap slides. On the first level of LEGO Racer's Imperial Grand Prix, if you do not activate your snap slides, your first lap, if you do it as fast as possible, will be about 30 and a half seconds. If you use your snap slides, you utilize your snap slides, you can get about 29.1 or 29.2 seconds. You can save up to about 1.2 or 1.3 seconds by utilizing two separate boosts. This means that roughly each time you activate your snap slides, you can save about half a second per lap. So the more green boosts you use, the more time you will be saving. The other hidden mechanic of the game that we recently discovered uh, is just what I'm going to call warp boosts for the purpose of this video. It's when you come out of a warp, your vehicle does not go straight onto the ground, you actually retain a distance. Your car vehicle is about a foot off of the ground, about two feet off the ground. When you come out of the warp, during that period of time before your vehicle hits the ground, it's actually advantageous to not hold down any directional inputs. Because your vehicle is already going above 100% speed, by holding down forwards, you actually decelerate your vehicle down to 100% speed. So the longer your vehicle is in the air with that extra additional boost time, you do not want to be holding down forwards as you lose your acceleration. Warps. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to try my best with this. Warps is the reason that I think that LEGO Races is such an interesting speedrun. I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent here. Please humor me. Warps are really curious because when you activate a warp, you cannot pick up any other bricks during the warp. That is the main difference uh, between using a blue boost, a uh, green with two whites, versus the warp. With the blue boost, you can pick up whites along the way. If you warp, you cannot pick up any of those bricks. You have to time your warps in such a way that you are not going to be warping over any green bricks as much as possible. So on a track here, look at the map of Tribal Island Trail. There are two green bricks. If you activate a warp here for your first green brick, you are going to be warping over the second brick. You are not going to be able to pick it up. And thus, you do not want to use that warp there. A lot of the strategies for LEGO races hinge around the fact that you cannot pick up bricks during warps and you try to time your warps in such a way that you still have access to all the green bricks. However, while saying that, there are very intricate ways that the warps work. For instance, have a look. 
if you hold down a directional input while activating the warp, it will change the distance that your warp takes you. Have a look here. Further, if you slide or if you super slide, that will also change the outcome of your warp. Have a look here. Once again, if you are further left on the track or further right on the track, that will change how far your warp takes you. Have a look here. And once again, your speed when you activate the warp also affects how far you would go. Have a look here. And once again, your acceleration or deacceleration affects how long your warp goes. Have a look here. Uh, the, the, the thing, everything affects how long your warp goes. This means that at the top level for speed running Lego races, for every single warp in the game, you are going to have to try remember a very specific spot to use your warp, and you have to remember how fast you want to go, and you have to remember directional input. At a mid-level of speed running Lego races, nah, forget it, don't worry about it, just warp. But once you try to get those better and better times, just be cognizant of what inputs you are making when you warp, because that will change the outcome of how far you warp and where your warp will take you. Different car types. Okay, this is a really curious one to talk about. So you have the chassis weights in the 1999 version of the game. The most popular chassis by far is the turbocharger chassis. You've probably noticed that I've been using, in quotations, stacked up vehicles. That is, say, vehicles with the most amount of bricks on it. You would literally put as many bricks as possible until the game goes, nah, too many bricks, mate. You can't have any more. And you go, righto. The reason for this is there is a different weight system in LEGO Racers. Uh, so have a look at the Super Warp here on DAD using different chassises. You'll notice that the heavier chassis do not bounce as far. However, you can uh, retain a higher acceleration rate. Uh, sorry, a higher top speed, I mean, to say, than the other chassises. So the turbocharger chassis is just popularly considered to be the best one. The Joan of Cart chassis is awful. Oh my god, it's so bad. Have you tried using that chassis? It's so bad. Robo Racer, it's got to pick a bigger pickup radius, which is quite reasonable. Quite nice. Quite good on some levels, but it's not as fast as what the turbocharger is. The main uh, chassis that is used in the 1999 version is the turbocharger chassis, and this is because it just has a heavy weight and it retains very good steering. Where to start? This is a question that's asked very commonly, so I'm just going to touch on some of the major points here. One, where do you get the game? Just download it, it's abandonware. I'm sure LEGO Media don't mind or high voltage software. Sent them the fax asking uh, for permission to download it and they haven't got back to me and I've explicitly said do not reply if you are fine with this. They did not respond so there you go, implicit permission. Save folder, you want to go to where the game is saved. Um, you've got the folder saves in that you've got zero. That is the main save that the game accesses. All you want to do is you want to start the game, create a car, get your control set up, get your sound levels right, copy that file and then paste it in a separate folder. And then whenever you want to start again, just copy paste that into the save folder. Um, this is what my save file looks like. You can see that I've got a few different cars, a few different complete things. So you can go practice individual tracks, etc., etc. Live split, it's nice, but not necessary. Um, you can just record. You don't need to post it to speedrun.com for live split timer. It's nice, but not necessary. How to record, easy, you can just download OBS, or otherwise if you have it installed, you can just use the inbuilt uh, Windows Microsoft Xbox launcher thingy. You hold down the Microsoft button while you have LEGO Racers open, and you hit G. Just make sure that you're having LEGO Racers run as administrator for all the recording to work properly. That is a dog. Then you can just come onto the Discord server and you can chat, you can ask questions. What to do next? Just play the game. You don't need to watch a bunch of the runs and learn all the optimal routes. Just play and then you will implicitly learn the AI pathing, you'll learn why the routes are what they are, you'll learn the brick placement, you'll learn where warps take you and shoot you out, all of that. Um, then start recording times, post them, and then once you start getting competitive times, then maybe start learning the optimal routes. And don't be concerned about posting speedrun.com, it's not a big deal, just do it. The mods are amazing, Bagel has been absolutely supportive for everybody in the community, doesn't matter how good you are. Here is a video of a baby speedrunning. No idea whose baby this is, could be anybody's. Categories. Okay, there's two categories for the game. You have the glitched and you have the glitchless. The main difference between the two, um, the glitched, there's not too many glitches that actually allow you to save time in the game other than the big one, which is lap skipping, which is where you drive forward, hit an invisible checkpoint, turn around, find another invisible checkpoint, turn around, pass the finish line, whoop to do beat the game, broken it. That works in the 2001 version, does not work in the 1999 version. In the glitchless category, uh, it's very clear. You just drive, you go from, then you beat the game. Good. 
Thank you so much for watching the video. If any of you are interested in speedrunning the LEGO races, I've put a link down in the description for the Discord server. Um, even if you're not interested in actually like starting speedrunning, you can seriously just come and like have a chat. All of us are on pretty much daily. There's daily conversations going. Um, seriously, 2023, such a good year for LEGO races speedrunning. It's really, it really is like the biggest year for speedrunning yet. Um, even if you just want to ask questions, come have a chat in the Discord server. Really good, really good fun. Thanks, all the best. Take care.